Welcome back to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. Today, we have some pretty hot button topics to cover. We're going to talk about the Met Gala and how it kicked off the 2024 Block Party or Blockapalooza. We're going to talk about the new Instagram algorithm and some algorithms that Amazon is toying with and hiding indie books from their from their readers. So join us. Lost in the pages, we wander the trails With words as our guide Our spirit sets sail through magical stories We embark on a quest Unbound book babes, we journey our best Yeah, you're gonna have to tell me about this block party because I suck at social media and I have no idea what this is, but I was reading your notes and I was like, oh, this sounds pretty intense. Yes, this has been fantastic. Um, so, I mean, you could get into a really philosophical debate here, but we'll keep it fairly surface level. Like, social media. What do we, social media started out as like, MySpace, connecting with your friends. Mm -hmm. Facebook, connecting with long-distant families. Instagram, sharing random pictures of your day-to-day -day life that are pretty cool. TikTok, silly little skits, silly little things, silly little... But it's always been for, like, the lay person or the plebs, right? It's just the normal run-of-the-mill... Is plebs a bad word? I don't... I don't know. I don't either. We'll find out. Yep. Somebody will tell us. Yep. Um, right? It's always just been for, like, the peasant class. Um, however, celebrities have now been like, oh, we're going to get on TikTok, right? So Kim Kardashian, Taylor Swift, Ryan Reynolds hop on there. They put their little name in, and people are like, instantly, instantly 20 million followers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, overnight, just because of their name. Not because their videos are unique or interesting or anything like that. But then they're making like a million dollars per video that they're posting. Yeah. And then all of their stores, all of their businesses, um, everything, right? They're just capitalizing like crazy. However, and everybody's kind of always been upset about it. Like, nah. like I, for one, don't follow celebrities. This is not their space. Um, but this girl, Haley Bailey, um, she went to the Met Gala gala met gala and she dressed uh, her dress was inspired by marie antoinette and so she's there at the met gala and she is doing a little sound bit for her tiktok and the sound is let them eat cake <laughs> and then it goes in and everybody's like wow this looks an awful lot like the hunger games and this looks an awful lot like you guys are really disconnected from everything that's going on in the world Mm -hmm. um, nobody's talking about the genocide that's taking place in Gaza nobody's talking about the genocides in Africa nobody's talking about the atrocities across the world they're just like look at my big fancy dress it cost me $75,000 for a ticket to the Met Gala and $100,000 for this dress and $30,000 to get my makeup done and the after parties and this and that and everybody's like nah we're done so the block party is you go through and you block every celebrity, all of their businesses, um, any influencer that is not using their platform for the greater good in this world. That's crazy. That's really empowering, yeah. though. That is, a, that, is, that is a way to really voice your opinion, I feel, because social media is so integral to everybody's life, right? We all use it. We're all on it. Um, yeah, that's that's fantastic. I yeah, cuz like there's so much, you know, wealth and like one of I can't remember who, but I was reading a story about their the new face the woman who is the new face of Cartier, uh the jewelry brand, she wore a necklace that was actually believed to be stolen from India by the British. Yeah, and so Blocked. yeah. Blocked. Yeah, so that, I was, like, reading that, I was like, that is wild, and I'm like, of course, 
the celebrity, she did not address it, and I really can't remember her name, and I'm not going to give her a platform here. I'm going to tell the story of how this was a stolen artifact from India. But um, she, you know, I feel like she could have she could have done that and she could have used that as an opportunity to say this was an atrocity. Let me show you like this is it. This is actually this belongs like here's a giant sticky note on my chest with flowers on it because the garden of whatever uh, this belonged to India. But I mean, she's being paid who even knows how much money to be the face of Cartier. Um, so I was reading about that and I was just absolutely blown away. And I can't remember if that was this year's Met Gala or last year's Met Gala because I don't follow any of that stuff. I'm not a <laughs> celeb person at all. So, um, yeah. but it's just an example However, and to your point or to the point yeah. of what people's message are trying to get across. Like, it's just an over excessive display of wealth when there are so many terrible things happening in this world where here, even here in America, if people are like, ah, who cares about the rest of the world? We all should care first. Second of all, um, all the atrocities that are happening here in America as well. Um, there's so many of them. Uh, I mean, everybody, everybody is affected by inflation here. Like you can't, you can barely buy groceries right now. Like it's so bad. So like that, that's very small compared to the larger things in the world, but it's an example that is affecting everybody. So we're all on the same level there. Right. And then you have people that have no food. There's a homeless crisis. There's a literacy crisis. There's, um, atrocities happening to people in the LGBT community. Um, people, POC, people of color, like, there's so much bad just in the world. Like, we should, they should be advocating. If they have 20 million followers, they should be advocating for something. And the big thing is, um, one of the other things people pointed back to was The Rock and Oprah. When they got together and they're like, we're raising money for Hawaii. We want to raise $20,000. And you're like, you could both, you could, you could both just write a check. Yeah. For $20,000 and not even notice it was gone. Yeah. And you're going to sit here and beg, again, the plebes and the peasants. Yeah. For their last dollar when you have, come on. In excess of dollars? So, yeah, excessive dollars. Yeah. Um, so the big thing is, is that, like Bobby said, she doesn't really follow celebrities. But the big thing is, is to make sure that you're blocking them, mm -hmm. even if you don't follow them. And then going in, um, you can on TikTok, and I think on Instagram, you can type words that you don't want to see content related to. Yep. You, so you can say, I don't want to see the Kardashians. I don't want to see Skims. I don't want to see Kylie Cosmetics. I don't want to see Taylor Swift or whatever that guy is she's dating. I don't want to see anything from them. I don't want to see celebrity gossip. And that is just shutting down their reach and their mm -hmm. influence. And it may not be their sole source of income, but it's pretty substantial when you look at how much like Kim Kardashian makes off of a single TikTok post straight out of the creator fund. No, not even like ads or anything. So it's time. We're done. Yeah. We're done with celebrity reach. Yep. I like that because talking about reach, Instagram is changing their algorithm. And the reason again? that this- Again? yeah. I mean, <laughs> they always will, right? Because it's software. Software is always evolving, right? Um, you know, there's been a lot of problematic things with Instagram and being able to drive reach to, to your pages and stuff. So especially if you're a smaller creator, because Previously, the algorithm was designed to, if you had more followers, you then also typically had, you know, that correlated with more engagement, and then that showed your post to more people. So some of the changes are really great. They are, you know, adjusting the algorithm to show more small creators, um, and then push them to get them more engagement to grow, which is, there are some very good things about these changes. Um, so of course some good and some bad, we want to talk about the implications that this has on indie authors who use 
Instagram as a marketing platform for their work because this is where it starts to, we, we as readers really need to understand this so that way when we're making a post about a book or a, an author or if you're part of a street team or an arc team, you know, that we're actually not hindering their marketing, right? So if you're part of a street team or an arc team, typically you have some type of, and a lot of times this it happens through like Discord or Facebook pages, but um, you have a closed community of other members and the author will tell you special dates that are gonna happen. You kind of get the sneak peek at everything that they're working on to then when they provide you with the information and the date and time to post to help them push on these social media platforms, um, they'll provide graphics, they'll provide quotes, they'll provide all this really great stuff, but you should no longer uh, just take that information and post it. Because one of the most impactful changes to the algorithm is around original content. So basically, if a post is getting reposted, the same exact type of post or same graphic is getting reposted without meaningful edits, which of course Instagram doesn't really explain what meaningful edits is, like how much is enough to be meaningful, um, it can get flagged and it will actually suppress all of that content. So if you're involved in, on these platforms and you post, you let's we have to make sure that when you're given these graphics and this information that you do kind of make it your own and you put it out there and you post it but it's different enough and unique enough from another post to not get suppressed so that we are properly promoting our favorite indie authors and all the hard work that they've put in for us to enjoy all of their work i know this is you know i think you brought it up but it's a little bit more work right for mm -hmm. indie authors and their street teams but let's be honest we have all seen those really dumb stitches mm -hmm. of people just like using that green screen on somebody else's video and it's their little like floating head being mm -hmm. like yeah and you're like god this is this this is a dumb stitch it doesn't add anything mm -hmm. it doesn't you know you're just stealing their work without stealing their work so i think um, for indie authors, it'll be a bit of a challenge, but I think for creators as a whole, this will keep your content more, like, now people can't just, like, plagiarize your content and make yes. these little, like, edits and get 10,000 views when you got two. Yes, and that so, is exactly what it's trying to address, actually, is that the original creator really gets, yeah, yeah, that the original creator gets all, like, oh, more of that reach and that credit. So, yeah. so I like this for so many reasons uh, because I also like that it's a push for creativity. So taking the yes. same information and diversifying it. I love that because you can really then start to see like different types of materials and you can see, oh, I really like how this person does it. So you're going to engage with them. You're going to follow them. You're going to help them grow. You're going to probably share it. So I think it's going to really re-spark that creativity. I also think mm -hmm. it could be a better way because of this. I think it's going to be a better way for the authors and their teams to get diversified marketing, right? So because mm -hmm. it's so different, it's going to be diverse. There's going to be more to look at. It's going to be more engaging for people to want to scroll through a hashtag and see different things because a lot of times you click on a hashtag and you see the same exact post, but now you're going to click on a hashtag and you'll see a lot of different stuff. So you're going to be engaging and looking at that content more because it's so diversified. So, and that hopefully improves reach all around, which would be great because I can tell you from our experience, Instagram is hard. I hate Instagram. <laughs> it is so hard. And it, it's to the point where like I hate messing with it. Um, where I can post something yeah. on Instagram and TikTok and I can do it native on each app and have them be extremely similar and I'll get like 30 views on Instagram and 800 views on TikTok. And it's just, yeah. it's so difficult to do anything with it. So I'm excited, um, you know, cause somewhat selfishly because I don't feel like our podcast has had great reach on there either because of 
a, a lot of these things that they're starting to address. So it's pretty exciting. I'm, you know, excited for the smaller creators to kind of have their place. So, you know, this being paired with the block party is pretty exciting. It's pretty <laughs> excellent timing, actually. It really is. It really is. So remember, go block celebrities, follow the creatives, follow people that are doing more than just like, oh my God, Kim, have you eaten today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what sister I was impersonating there, but. <laughs> well, any of them probably. <laughs> but there's so many more creative people than celebrities. Celebrities are not creative. Everything's written for them they're just saying other people's words yeah they're just acting they're acting like they care they yeah. don't care i would like to have the caveat that i'm sure some of them have hills that they'll die on and that they care about but maybe they should put more focus on those rather than themselves there's going to be a little cannon fodder right there's going to be a little guilt by association but um for the most part i i I got to disagree with you there. I'm so sorry. I just, I don't think any of them, they're all vapid. They're all desperate for attention and they don't give a shit about anybody, anybody or anything besides their own little pocket. Oh, I guess I'm just like diluted by, I watched uh, Last Meals, which is by the Mythical Kitchen and Burt Kreitcher was on there. So he was, it's like a podcast. It's a, it's a video podcast on YouTube by the Mythical Kitchen and they had Burt Kreitcher on and he's like, he just seems like such a genuine dude. He like, he like cried like hard <laughs> in this podcast when he was just talking about his passion for people and like life and, and all this stuff. And it was, so maybe I watched that really late last night. So maybe I'm just like, <laughs> you know, that's what's in the forefront of my mind is is like a Burt Kreischer vibe. <laughs> See, here's here's how I hear. Maybe I'm pessimistic, but I would rather assume that they're all garbage and then be shocked that like, damn, he is a good dude. That's crazy and unique. Rather than being like, man, I bet this one's good, and then being like, gutted and devastated that they're garbage. Like Henry you know Cavill. Yes. <laughs> also, here's the other thing I'm thinking with this whole 2024 block party and how it affects the book talk community or the bookish community. Mm -hmm. We have to stop casting books for fun. We have to stop saying their names and giving them and posting their faces. Oh. Unless they've done something noteworthy. <laughs> That's kind of true because... I love like our Psycho Shifters casting. That was so fun. So much fun. So much fun. So yeah, there's a point there. Like, now you have to go back and be like, have they done anything noteworthy that warrants them? Or do we just stay silent on on casting for fun as a book community? Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Hmm. Or what uh, we could do is we could just be like it just sucks because there's not like a lot of fandom art for smaller fandoms like there's not a lot of you know book art for psycho shifters right there's a few things that right. you know the author has commissioned and stuff like that but it would be great on some of the things that there is a lot of fan art for outside of sjm uh that <laughs> <laughs> that you know you could find artists work and be like oh my gosh this one is you know this one is the one for such and such character kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah. But so I think if you're if you're going to stay strong with the block party, um no more no more pretend casting. No yeah. more putting their faces out there. Yeah. Not that they get any money from that, but they get notoriety. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we have to stop doing that? Yeah. Do we as a collective bookish community Do we have to stop? Do we have to stop fake casting? In order to stand strong. Also, the other really great thing from the block party is the new word called the digitine. Do you know what a guillotine is? Oh my, that's so I'll get funny. You a pic I'll get you a picture. We can put a guillotine up here because I don't know if everybody knows what it is. But it's a digital guillotine. A digitine. I, that's, I love that word. I am now very excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> oh, so, yes. Hashtag block party, hashtag digitine, hashtag no more attention for celebrities unless they're going to do something to warrant it besides 
existing. eat 200 calories a day and get on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time we upload. It really helps us out. Uh, speaking of, like, controlling things... Um, Uh-oh. Uh oh. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Amazon Audible <laughs> is making has made a choice to block erotic content from searches. So if you, I'm an adult. Yeah. But I'm an adult. And yeah. I have an adult level user profile. Yes. So so they have changed Girl. their policy. Um, and people are supposed to be fully opted into this automatically. When I checked my account, I was not automatically opt opted in. So I'm going to take a second and I'm going to cut to show you how to turn this off. Um, because I have gone through and shown, um, on mobile how to do it and on how to do it on a computer through your profile for Audible, how to turn this off. Um, you do need to do it on a browser. You cannot do it in the app, but you can still do it on your phone just through a browser. So I show you both of those methods. So on the computer to turn off the erotic filter that Audible is now putting on their screen, you're gonna go to your Audible account. You're going to say, highlight your name at the top. You're gonna go down to account details. Then you're going to go over to settings. And from here, you will see the hide erotic content in searches. So you want to unclick that. Or if you do want to hide it, this is how you hide it. Um, you're With this new push, they were supposedly going to be opting everybody in automatically. Uh, mine did not opt in automatically. Like When I went and I checked this, mine were not checked. So... I don't know if and when that's going to happen, but just so you know, this is where you can turn it off on browser. For mobile, you're going to select the hamburger menu in the upper left, and then you're going to select on your name, go down to settings, and you will see if you scroll in preferences, hide erotic content in searches. So it says hide erotic content from search. So. Let's take a step back and talk about the difference between erotica and erotic, because erotica is a genre that is explicit. It's a genre. <laughs> a genre that is explicit. Um, how they're defining erotic is very interesting because they are using AI. It's not reading mm. the book text. What it is doing is reading alt text of images. It's scanning the images on the page, so like the book cover. Um, it's scanning reviews. So if you say that this has adult content in it, it's spicy, like the algorithm and their crawlers are looking at all of this information and then just putting it in the bin of this contains erotic content, meaning adult level explicity. So. Wow. <laughs> yes. So you have to... That's it. That's it. AI has gone too far. It's gone too far. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you go and you shut this off or double check that it's not on, in my case, um, to make sure that your search isn't compromised. So if you're like searching for a title, um, and I know like Charlena like Bucci talked about this, right? She's like, if you search for my name and the book title, it comes up. But if you are like looking for you know a book similar to this book or something like that it's not gonna come up because it's been classified as erotic do you know what else it's doing what else is it doing? it's stripping authors of their bestseller title what because it's reclassifying so they're <gasps> no longer a bestseller in romance because it's classified as erotic or erotica no freaking way. So they obviously, yeah, so they're no longer a roman romantic bestseller. They're bottom of the barrel erotica. And that's why 
that's another part of the reason why it won't like be recommended because it's not a bestseller anymore. So what you sold half a million copies under the romance title, but that title was wrong. So now you're at those numbers don't translate as it follows these indie authors into different categories. Bastards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Amazon is the lifeblood of indie authors. It truly really is. And now they're they're messing with it. Yeah. In all the wrong ways. So Block celebrities, follow your favorite authors. You can follow them on Amazon, right? You can follow, like, when you go to an author that you find. Is that Amazon or Goodreads that you can follow? I think you can follow them on Amazon. You can follow authors so can on check. Amazon? Yeah. Yep. So go follow your favorite authors on there. Um, or just even authors that you one time read and you think they're pretty okay. Mm hmm Yeah. Wild, isn't it? So wild. <sighs> assholes you want to know one thing that they're kind of getting right though over at amazon oh no do i i'm not in i don't know if i'm in a mood to celebrate amazon all right give me a second <sighs> get me with it so they came out with a new feature for all of us book bookish people it's called your books <laughs> um so Allegedly, you can just type into the search bar your books, and this is supposed to come up. It and it didn't for me, but I it's in beta, so maybe that's why. But it does give you this itty bitty little box that says go to your books, and then you can click that and it brings you to the your books page, which is essentially a library for all of the print digital and audiobooks that you've ever purchased through your Amazon account. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's incredible. Damn, that is good. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> I hate that I love it. <laughs> yes, I do too. I do too. Um so it also is it's supposed to like you can organize things and it's going to give you like better recommendations based on the items that you've purchased and your reading habits. So your library has all your titles and you can organize them based off of different categories. So like author, genre, etc. And they're going to use that to give you better recommendations for sim similar titles. You, you're a mood reader. You're a mood reader. I'm a mood reader. Do you think they're going to keep up with that? And they're gonna know that in in February, I want. <laughs> I don't. That would be a pretty impressive algorithm. I want violent femme fatales in in February, and I want. I mean, everybody wants spooky in the fall, so that's right. an easy one. But yeah, I don't. I, I don't want know. no romance in December. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's actually really interesting. Is it? Is it gonna be like that? Is it going to start to see your trends every year and, and make recommendations off of that? That's actually a very good question. It does. There is a like a saved books feature. So like right now on Amazon, I have like a, a list that's called TBR. And then I have a couple other lists that are like March of 2023, which I know is a year ago. But like when books are coming out, I would make a new list with that month. And then I'd say okay that book is going to be released in march and stuff so i could go back through and scroll through my list and be like okay it's june of or it's going to be june of 2024 what's coming out in june and then i'm like oh a cj archer is going to release another book cool so bobby it, you are ai's wet dream the way you organize everything <laughs> uh, i you know there's that's not the first time I've heard that <laughs> comment about being something in Adamant's wet dream. Like, <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> but um, yes, I yes, am more organized. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom actually gave me that uh, that idea. So, and, and we're actually <laughs> filming this on on Mother's Day. So, happy Mother's Day to the moms out there. I know this will be a week late by the time you see it, but. You're awesome. You're amazing. You deserve more than just today. Ooh, start a fight in the comments. Are dog moms real moms? Go ahead. Fight it out in the comments. 
my mom, we're not going to weigh in. <laughs> oh, I won't weigh in then. <laughs> but my mom texts me happy Mother's Day today. Oh. <laughs> I'm just a dog mom. Pew, pew, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> my mom says it's okay. <laughs> What they're doing in the Save Books feature on your books at Amazon is consolidating those lists. So they've taken all of my lists that contain books and put them in one place so I can see them all. So that's kind of cool. They've aggregated everything for me. Another feature that is really, really cool is notes and highlights. So all of the books that I've ever put notes in or highlights in, it will now bring you to a separate web page to look at them. So you don't have to go to Goodreads to see them. Now, this isn't a place for reviews. So, cause I was like, oh my gosh, is this what Amazon's been working on? Because Goodreads is such a problem and then they're not gonna use Goodreads anymore. It's gonna be your books, Amazon, your books. But there isn't, um, isn't this, I didn't see a place to like provide reviews based on those books. But Amazon allows reviews, right? So it's not... They do. And a AI would need to know my opinions of these books to know if, like, more like this, less like this, right? Like, Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to, like, move forward, if we're going to see dr any dramatic mm. changes to Goodreads or Goodreads just be ignored and then start to put all this effort into your books. I don't know. So it says you can go and you can type in your books and press enter and it would bring them up. It doesn't automatically bring it up. What I noticed is that it talks about this right here at the top of the page, your books, find all your Kindle, Audible, and print books in one place, your books library. So I click on it and it brings me to my books. You can see that these are all the things in my library currently. Um, I have a lot in there, <laughs> but you can go through and you can organize these. Uh, there's some suggested filters based on things that I read a lot of or I own a lot of. You can also go to saved books. So this is actually going to pull from any list that I made on Amazon and I saved them, I have a whole TBR list for Amazon. That's kind of how I've been storing titles. But here they are in a more organized format. So very, very cool. You can also check your list by clicking on them. You can see my TBR, my kind of like business TBR. When releases come out, I actually would name them the month and what books are coming out as an example here. Some of these are old. I probably should clean all of this up. I can also organize by author. So it will pull out and actually tell me who and what um, books I have in my library by what type of author, author or by whom has written it. And this is very cool. Um, one of my other favorite things is actually notes and highlights. So if you were to click on this, it's going to actually open a new tab. I have it open already. So I'll just click over there and you can see all the books here listed that I have highlights on. And my latest one, was actually the last wish from the Witcher saga. And you can see all of my notes and my highlights from here. Most of these are just highlights. Um, I don't take a ton of notes on my device. But yeah, this is very, very cool, very exciting. It is in beta, but that's awesome. There's also this find books like yours function. So if I was to click on it, it's going to actually give me, I didn't know she was doing another one. See, this is cool. So it's going to give me recommendations based on this particular book that I read. Um, so then there's Tom Felton one, the more... This is very, very cool. Very exciting. Pretty, pretty, pretty freaking cool. It's really cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> I read a book and then whatever they recommended next that sounded good or looked good on the cover, I would read. And it was a lot of indie stuff. And that's kind of how I got back into reading. Because um, I hadn't read for years because of like college and, and like getting into the corporate world and stuff like that. And then I was like, I picked up reading again. And 
I just ended up going down this rabbit hole through my Kindle's recommendations. So this is very exciting. I also love indie books, so I feel like this is also going to give uh, me really great suggestions for more indie authors, because if that's what I'm reading, that's what they should be recommending me. So <laughs> pretty cool, pretty exciting. I hate that I love it. Yep. Progress. Damn it, Amazon, you <laughs> did it again. Progress in the right direction. All right. So, if oh my gosh, I, we talked about so much stuff in this episode. <laughs> I know. I mean, um, I don't even know how to do a recap. Um, exactly. I guess if I were to recap, I would say block celebrities, block people with blue check marks on Instagram, TikTok. Follow people you love. Follow people that are out here making a difference, being creative, and just. Keep reading. Keep keep on keeping on. With each turn of the page, a new world unfolds. From ancient castles to stories untold, we travel through time with the books as our wings, exploring the realms that imagination brings. Spellbound pages. Our hearts intertwined